Hey guys, Richard from Digital Foundry here with a beautiful exploit for the PlayStation TV as revealed by hacker Mr. Gas. The exploit is based around the Vita's email system, which can be utilised to rewrite certain areas of the Vita's storage. In this case, it overwrites the game's whitelist, allowing you to play any Vita title on PlayStation TV. And as you can see here, without the exploit, perfectly playable Vita games like Wipeout 2048 that should work fine on the PS TV simply don't. So here's how to exploit the system with a tip of the hat to YouTuber Dom Thy Bomb, who created an excellent video tutorial for the process, which you can find linked below. First up, create a fresh Gmail account, then download the Thunderbird email client and tie it into the newly minted account. A Gmail window opens up to authenticate the connection, OK that, and then go into Gmail on your browser. Now in the settings, enable POP for all mail and also enable IMAP. Now, the exploit works by sending yourself two specially prepared files, and you can also find those linked in the description text below. We've got them saved on a USB flash drive here, and we're just copying them across to the desktop. Now, in Thunderbird, go to the Options panel here and open a save message, pointing it towards the writer.eml file. Open that, and then under the Message tab, select Edit a new message, or press Ctrl+E e for the same thing. From here you change the recipient email address to your new account and then send it. Now create a new message and import the list underscore launch underscore vita dot dat file. Then once again address that to yourself. Now this is the important bit. Change the subject line to the following and it's got to be entered perfectly. UR0 colon game forward slash launch forward slash list underscore launch underscore vita dot dat. After this, right click on the attachment and rename it to hash zero. Once again, send that to yourself and the prep work on the PC is completely done. So let's maximize our PSTV monitor window here and get to work. Set up the fresh Gmail account here, then select yes to sync your contacts. Now, in your inbox, select the first message you sent, here it's at the bottom of the list, and click on the image. Now press Home and quit out of the application completely. This is signified by the page turning effect you see here. Now select the email app again and re-enter your details. Now click on the second email you sent at the top of the pile, and once again click on the image. Now, again, you really need to quit out completely from the email app here, and you'll see that from the page turning effect. Now, in theory, all phases of the exploit are complete, so let's go back to the Vita main menu, and let's try and load Wipeout 2048 again. Success! It works! Now, there was never really any logical reason why this game should have been blacklisted at all. Touch is only used on the title screens, and if you have a DualShock 4 connected, you can navigate those just fine using the touchpad. And even if you have a DualShock 3, pressing the analog sticks down brings up a pointer you can use instead. That's all you need to get Wipeout 2048 going, and as you can see, the full game is now completely playable. So, are there any drawbacks to this? Well, the email exploit has been around for a while now, and it may well be patched in a future Sony system software update at any point. Secondly, there's a good reason why many of the Vita's titles are blacklisted on PSTV. For example, Uncharted Gold in Abyss requires the use of the camera at one point, while touch-heavy games like Tearaway are almost certainly a complete write-off on PSTV. But with that said, a substantial amount of titles run just fine, and Wipeout 2048 is just one of them. The Metal Gear Solid HD collection is another. So, from our perspective, Sony can respond to this in two ways. It can close off the exploit and sandbox PSTV again. Alternatively, it could respond more positively, bearing in mind that the system really could do with all the love it can get. In future firmware updates, it could simply offer up a warning prompt whenever a non-whitelisted game is run, so users are aware of the compatibility issues, but crucially, they have the choice whether to run it or not. But in the meantime, this exploit method has been tested by us, it works fine with no ill effects, and it's well worth checking out if you own a PSTV. 
Just be wary of those future system software updates if you want to keep the functionality. But if Sony does choose to open up the library of Vita titles officially, we'll be sure to let you know. But that's all we have for now. If you found the video useful, give us a like and subscribe to Digital Foundry to get all of our videos delivered to you directly. But for now, thanks for watching.